In this video, I'm going to be walking you through how we put out anywhere from 100 to 150 unique pieces of content every single month. And the main way we're able to do that is through the leveraging of automation and chat GPT. In my experience, after having created thousands of videos over the past few years, the biggest bottleneck that I have when creating new videos or new content is in the idea stage. So even if I have a topic or something that I have a rough idea of what I want to create, it's typically the process of taking that from my head and putting it to paper in the rough version of a script, thumbnails, titles, and social media captions that bottlenecks me from actually producing the piece of content. So what I've done is I've used automation and ChatGPT, like I'm about to show you in this video here, in order to remove my thinking process from that as much as possible. Now, one caveat I wanna give you before I share my screen here is that most people will tell you, oh, ChatGPT can write your captions for you and write your YouTube videos for you. And a lot of people are afraid that ChatGPT or AI is gonna take over all of content creation. This may be something that happens in the next three to five years, but right now, in my personal opinion, no one's gonna want to read directly from what ChatGPT spits out, no matter how good your prompts are. So instead, what we should be using is ChatGPT as a tool, not as a replacement. It's essentially gonna spark the ideas or give us the framework or outline that we're gonna to use to create really valuable content, even if you're already an expert on the subject. So let me dive into my screen here. There's just uh, two main areas I wanna walk you through really quickly. The first is our Asana dashboard and our Asana pipeline. So this video is not gonna to go too deep inside of the pipeline here. If you guys want me to create a different video on our entire media pipeline, how we put out like thousands of pieces of content pretty much every single month between ourselves and our clients, you can comment down below. But the main thing you need to know is the way that I use ChatGPT and automation is I throughout the week, throughout the month, I'll be reading a book or I'll see a video and I go, that's a pretty great video idea. And so what I'll do is I'll come into a sauna here and I'll add a YouTube video task and I'll just say whatever the name of the video idea is going to be. So let's just say, for example, why I'm selling my Porsche, right? So I'll put that inside of this backlog and I'll just let that marinate for a few days. And then whenever I come in to shoot my content, my media, which I do usually once a month, I'll come look at this backlog channel here and I'll see, is there anything here that I really enjoy, that I like, that I know is trending, that I feel like I could create some content around? And what I'll do is I'll actually drag this into the needs to film column right here. I'll actually even zoom in a little bit for you guys. So I'll drag this into the needs to film column right here, and that will trigger a few automations to happen. First and foremost, it triggers an automation so that uh, it creates a Google Drive folder for us inside of Google Drive. One of the other biggest bottlenecks that we had in creating and publishing more content was like the technical aspect of uh, content creation. So, you know, how do you find the Google Drive folder? What's the naming conventions for Google Drive folder? et cetera, et cetera. And whenever possible, we always try to rely on automation to do that for us versus having to do human beings make those decisions and go through that process. So through automation, I've been able to create a, a setup so that whenever we move something that needs to film column, it'll actually go inside Google Drive and create a Google Drive link uh, and then put it inside of the Asana task. So then whenever I'm done shooting this video, for example, I can click on this really quickly and it will drop, I can drop the video inside of here and that will have my team to be able to come in here and edit it and then publish it, okay? And then in addition to that, what this does is it will set up a subtask below here called a media research. And what media research is, is this is how I'm able to use ChatGPT to do a lot of the heavy lifting for me on my videos. So if you don't know what Zapier is, it's essentially an if this, then that software. So if this thing happens over here, then do this thing over there. For example, if today is Monday, then I need to go work out, right? So that's the roughly if this, then that in everyday life. Another example in an automation could be if someone books an appointment to speak with you, then send them an email reminding them about the appointments. So there's thousands, I mean, probably hundreds of thousands, of millions of different variations you could use. And I have really extensive guides on Zapier. Some of my best videos as far as views are concerned are on Zapier. And you can check that out. We'll link them in the description down below. 
But let's assume that either you already have some understanding of Zapier or you're pretty easy at picking up software. Let me walk through what this process looks like so I can get pretty much an entire script and outline and a uh, headline and captions done for me before I've even started the video. And before I even have to go into chat GPT, type out the prompt and do everything, right? This is all automated. So the first thing is our trigger, remember if this, so our trigger is that there is a new subtask in Asana. So inside of Asana, like I said, whenever we move them into this needs to film section here, a subtask is created uh, and it says media research essentially, or video research. And that creation inside of Asana then triggers this creation inside of Zapier. So it looks for a new subtask. Um, the trigger, like I said, is going to be inside the media pipeline. The workspaces are company scaling with systems. Then we're only continuing if the name of the subtask contains the words video research. So if we were to create a different uh, subtask and I did it, for example, like post a caption, I don't want that to trigger this automation. So it needs to contain the words video research and the parent name of the task uh, does not contain the word asset. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because, you know, we're a marketing company. We put out a bunch of assets, videos, video sales letters, ads, all that stuff every single week. And we also do that for our clients as well. And so I need to make sure that this is not triggering on an ad. I don't need ChatGPT to help me write an ad, maybe in the future, but as of right now, it's pretty much just YouTube videos. So this is a filter step. So you come to app uh, filter by Zapier and only continue if the name contains video research and the parent name. So the name of the, uh, this, the parent task right here uh, does not contain the word asset. Okay. So let's say we continue that passes through that. Then the next step that we're doing, this is a little bit advanced, but for some of you, this may make sense. I want to send uh, ChatGPT a prompt of what I want them to create the YouTube video on. But I can't just send them the prompt based off of the title of this parent task here, because the problem is that it has all these additional words in here. New YouTube video using AI and your automation. So if I sent that to ChatGPT, it would be confused. I would say, hey, make me a video outline on new YouTube video using AI and your automation. It, it probably would not be able to pull from that or it wouldn't be that useful. So instead what I do is I actually split the text, which is a formatting step inside Zapier, and I put the input is the name of the entire parent name of the task, which is YouTube video for Ruby, and then whatever the words would be after that. I say the separator is the two colon, the colons right here, because as you can see, this is a little colon. And then I say everything after the colon, so last, so this is separating this, everything after the colon is the name of the YouTube video, the rough idea or the rough script, not the final name, but the rough name. So in this example here, the zap would trigger when I moved it to needs to film, then it would uh, filter and make sure that this is not an asset and make sure that it says YouTube video, which it does. And then it would finally pull just this part that I've highlighted here using AI in your automation in order to create the chat GPT prompts. Okay. So hopefully you're with me so far. Then we'd come down here and you can make an action, which is send prompt in open AI. So if you don't know, but at this point, what chat GPT is, then there's a very good chance you're living under a rock, but essentially it's like almost like a personal assistant that you literally say, Hey, can you do this for me? And it'll spit back an answer within two to three minutes. Okay. It's pretty unbelievable. And I have a different video that goes more in depth on it. And so you would say, I need you to send a prompt, which is pretty much like you asking chat GPT how to do something. And then you can uh, sign into your chat GPT account right here and we'll click on continue. And then the model that we use is uh, text da Vinci 003. And then this is probably the most important part of this whole video. So I have tried a bunch of different prompts to get what I wanted out of it. Because remember, I want to make this as seamless and as automated as possible. And this is what has worked out really well for me because you can't have things that are too long or it won't work in that chat GPT response. Uh, you can't give too many um, different questions because or different prompts because then it'll convolute the answer. So what I've done is I've created uh, write me two persuasive titles, two social media captions, three social media hashtags and one outline for a YouTube video on. And then it's pulling in from the previous step that formatting step right here. So in this example here, it would, it would say, uh, write me two persuasive titles, two social media captions, three social media hashtags, and one outline for a YouTube video on using AI in your automation. So that, so it's pulling, all this is happening in a split second inside of Zapier. Okay. Uh, the temperature, if you don't know what temperature is, it's pretty much like uh, how risky you want uh, ChatGPT to be. So if it's like a 0.1 temperature, then it's going to be like very, very serious and not very creative. It doesn't take a lot of 
uh, creative freedoms, if you will, where a, a point nine is like, hey, you could say, write me two precise titles, then it, it goes like off on a tangent. It's like your crazy uncle that drinks too much and um, calls himself an artist. So you, I kind of think point seven is the best in my experience. So that's what we keep inside of there. Uh, maximum length, we uh, I put 256 because you don't want to use too many tokens or it'll sp spit back an error. So we keep that at 256. Um, and then this is kind of a default, but top P is one and you don't have to worry about anything else. And then if you come down here and you were to uh, test this, then what ends up happening is it spits out what you're looking for here. So the first is the persuasive titles. So the example that I used when I first created this uh, a few months ago was I was shooting a YouTube video on how to create Facebook look like audiences. So the first thing it sent me, remember the prompt that I asked first was for uh, two persuasive titles. So if I come back down here and I look at the test, sorry, you can see the persuasive titles are uh, how to reach more customers using the power of Facebook look like audiences, unlock the potential of your customer base with look like audiences, right? So those are the two different titles. Once again, are those ready to be posted on YouTube right now? Probably not, but they are the good beginning for us to be able to use when I'm shooting the YouTube video and then one of my teams creating the titles. The next thing I asked of the prompt was to create social media captions. So this is uh, reach more customers with the help of Facebook lookalike audiences. The second one is discover the key benefits of using lookalike audiences to grow your business. Once again, are these ready to go on social Social media? No, but when you're putting out 100 to 150 pieces of content every single month, you know, you're not every single caption doesn't have to be like 50 minutes long to be able to create it. If I can use this as a as a framework to get just the bones of it in, then I can come in here and I can uh, adjust it and make it, you know, special for me to post on social media. Then you have hashtags. So I asked for three social media hashtags. So we have default hashtags that we use on all of our YouTube videos and all of our social media posts. But then we always like to add two to three in there that are specific to this YouTube video. And they figured it out for us. So we can just copy this. It'll come inside of our Asana task. And then finally, the YouTube video outline. So this is probably the most valuable thing here because this is gonna be what I copy and paste or what in this example here will come into my subtask and I'm looking at while I'm shooting this video. So I could have this next to me in an additional screen and I could be looking at, okay, the introduction, the benefits, the step-by-step -step guide, how to measure and conclusion. And this is actually funny because although I would say that I'm probably with all due respect, uh, one of the top three to 5% of people in the world who knows how to run Facebook ads and knows audiences. I've spent millions of dollars of my own money on the platform and we've taught thousands of people how to do it. I didn't even think about talking about how to measure the success of a look like audience. So this is a true story when I was creating this. I pretty much had all of this here, but I didn't think about, oh, well, how do you even know if this is a good look like audience or a bad look like audience? I was just gonna end the video after I talked about the step-by-step -step guide of setting up the look like audience. But ChatGPT did me a favor and said, hey, you should probably talk about how do you measure the success of a look like audience. And so when I shot that video, I added that part in there in addition to the other steps here, and it made a really great video, a really conclusive, wholesome video, right? And then finally, so this is all happening in a split second, we wanna update the original task back inside of Asana. So if I move my pretty little head here, you can see that it says update task inside of Asana, continue, continue. Uh, we find the task by the ID and then, and remember the task was found earlier whenever there was a subtask created. So you can pull this subtask ID from step one. And then you come down here and I actually just put in the choice text, which is essentially everything that I just read off to you inside of this prompt right here. So you can see choices, choice text right here. And that's the titles, that's the social media hashtags, and that is the outline. So then I will literally put that inside of uh, the Asana subtask and I zap that over into Asana. And then that'll appear right here on the bottom inside of the Asana subtask. So just to recap for you really quickly, what am I doing whenever I'm ready to shoot a video? How am I using AI? Well, I come up with a video idea. I put it inside the backlog. When it's time for me to film the video and I'm saying this is a good idea, all I do is I drag this over into needs to film. Once I drag this over into needs to film, it will set up two zaps. The first zap is to create a Google Drive folder so that I can just, as soon as I'm done filming, like for this video here, I'm literally just gonna come inside of here and upload this video right here. And there's no guessing where's the links, where do I go, what's the naming conventions, it's all right here. And the second automation that happens is it will set up a video research subtask, which triggers this zap here, which will then go through and uh, find, make sure that it's not a, a asset and make sure that it is, um, 
what does the other filter I actually forget? Make sure it's not an asset. Oh, and make sure the subtask contains the word video research. Then it pulls the name of the title from the parent task by separating out this little section right here, a new YouTube video. It removes that from there. And then what it does is it will send the prompt into ChatGPT uh, in order to pull the information that you're looking for. So the, t the, the prompt was, uh, write me two persuasive titles, two social media captions, three social media hashtags, and one outline for a YouTube video on the title that I put it inside of here. And then the final thing is it will update the task inside of Asana. So it'll come back here, it'll kick it back. And so while I have, you know, getting ready to get set up to shoot my video, I can scroll down here and I can find the subtask and look at all of that right before I shoot the video.